Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about some brand new QNAPs and not just any old brand new QNAPs but possibly the most interesting QNAP NAS I've seen this year. It's part of their brand new Thunderbolt 3 and 10 GPE enabled range. The XT series is what I'm going to call it for the rest of the video but just to be clear it's three units, a 4 bay, 6 bay, and an 8 bay, known as the TVS 472 XT, the TVS 872 XT and the TVS 672 XT. These three devices are not just the new range of Thunderbolt 3 devices, but they've really developed that range uh, and focused on the priorities for a number of units to, uh, units to a point where not only are these arriving at an interesting price point that I'll talk about later on in the video, but also the hardware options, have they've removed all the chaff and got rid of the stuff that no one cared about and then doubled down on the stuff that you did care about. So, first and foremost, the chassis is very similar to that of the 82 series at the moment. I'm sure there's a graphic on the screen for all three. And the device features an LCD panel on the front there. They've done away with those 2.5 inch SSD bays built into the front there. I know a number of you prefer to use internal caching rather than the external bays there because you never swap them. On top of that, normal click and load trays there built into the front of the 4, the 6 and the 8 bay device. There's also a front mounted USB 3.1 Gen 2 copy button to um, back up this device um, to or from an external drive over that 10 gigabit, um, 10 gigabit connection, not Ethernet, USB. On the rear of the device of this metal chassis, we find ourselves with some great connections. Um, first and foremost, we're looking at uh, USB 3.1 ports there, Type-C and their normal USB 3 Type-A ports as well. So again, huge amount of connectivity there with brand new kinds of connections. But of course, we've got Thunderbolt 3, we've got a couple of USB Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. Theoretical 40 gigabits per second connectivity, as well as a dedicated um, 10 GBE, 10 G based T Ethernet port on the rear, paired up with those LAN ports as well. Now, rather than install a card this time around, they've given you two slots there, um, uh, the first slot is being occupied by the Thunderbolt 3 card. The second slot is left empty, which can now be, can be um, populated with some of those brand new QNAP cards, the QM2 series, uh, the wireless AP card, or even supported GPU cards. And 10 GP has been given its own onboard dedicated port. Alongside these, we've got an HDMI port there, and that's HDMI 2.0a, which means greater support of 4K media, thanks to the internal hardware that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, we've got the rear mounted speakers there, we've got the audio in and out port, and again, as I mentioned earlier, those USB Type-A and Type-C ports give a greater depth of connectivity to this device. Now, internally, it supports the very latest um, 14 TB hard drives, so Seagate, Ironwolf, uh, NAS drives. Well, on top of that, it does support SSD bays, in uh, SSD drives on those individual bays. But what's really interesting is now we've got those internal M2 um, SSD ports, but now they support NVMe. So now we've got a device that's got Thunderbolt 3 connectivity, great amount of rated storage, a huge variety in connectivity, and NVMe SSD cache inside. So again, a huge amount of throughput internally without the, um, the bottleneck externally. Now, in case this isn't already interesting enough, we, from what we understand, QNAP are being a little bit more discerning about the CPUs this time around. Don't get me wrong, the i3, um, i5 and i7 7th gens that were being utilised in the 82 series are still very, very powerful and very, very capable. But what they've done with this is the 4-bay features a Pentium. And that Pentium is a gold G5400T. It's a dual-core 3.1 GHz CPU, 64-bit chip, obviously. And it arrives with an embedded graphical component as well, and on top of that, DDR4 memory, with the 4-bay device arriving with 4 gig of memory that can be upgraded, I believe, up to 32 gig. Now, what's really interesting about that Pentium Gold chip is what it does to the price, because the 4-bay is going to retail for about £1,100, give or take, depending on where you shop around. And again, that price is to be confirmed. But you compare that with the TVS 682T, you already make a huge saving there by streamlining and removing some of the unnecessary features, like the 2.5 inch front mounted SSDs or the multiple HDMI ports there on the rear. This gives you all of the important things you care about internally and externally, NVMe cache as well, and the HDMI 2 port, but scaling back the price on the 4-bay. If we move to the 6-bay device, again, 
most of the features we talk about are exclusive across all three units. All you'll find in difference is the number of hard drive bays and that CPU, because the six bay device arrives with an i5 CPU, and that i5 is an 8th gen um, 8400T. It is a quad core CPU, sorry, it's the 8100T, and it's 3.1 gigahertz in clock speed per core. And on top of that, it's a 64 bit chip, and then arrived with 8 gig of DDR4 memory. Once again, can be upgraded just as much. Now, that one retails for about £1,400, maybe £1,450. Um, and once again, to be confirmed with things like tax and that and stuff like that. But that's still a great price for a Thunderbolt enabled 6 bay device. <coughs> Which leads us to the 8 bay. Now, the 8 bay has got the best CPU of all by a country mile. It's an i5, but it's an 8th gen i5 and the 8400T, and it's a 6 core chip. 1.7 gigahertz per core, and they can be burst up to 3.3 gigahertz each. Enormously powerful. And on top of that, this device arrives with 16 gig of DDR4 memory and a price point at about 17 to 800 pounds. And again, the biggest, best 8 bay from the 82 series is about three grand. This is way, way less. I mean, there's no words on release dates at the moment, I've got to tell you, but we are looking at early 2019 release date for these things. So if you're urgently in need of a Thunderbolt NAS, you want to be looking at the 82 series and want to look at that 453 BT3 if your price is a little bit crippling. But these three devices are arriving at an excellent price point, an excellent hardware point, and in terms of what they can do when you've got Thunderbolt um, to 10 GBE network access with that virtual switch, QTS 4.3.5 upgrades, and just in general, it being a fantastic device. And if you want to learn more about QNAT NAS, check out my other videos. This could well be the best NAS I've seen in about 12 months. And I'm very interested to get my hands on it when they first become available with the speed tests and the comparisons to an existing Thunderbolt unit. But right now, that is all we know about these devices. Do check out the SPAN and the NAS compare links in the description to learn more about these devices. And we'll upgrade and update those pages as much as possible. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.